Well, hello everybody, this is Dr. David Jockers, and today I'm talking about seven herbs that enhance autophagy in your body. And so we know autophagy is this powerful healing process that takes place inside of our body, where our body literally rebuilds itself. It literally uh, breaks down old decaying cellular organelles and helps rebuild new healthy cellular organelles. And so it's just so powerful. And so when we look at this, we understand that there's a true science of fasting and autophagy. And so fasting is one of the top ways to develop autophagy. In fact, it is the best way to enhance autophagy. And again, autophagy means self-eating. So it's basically our body breaking down older, damaged cellular organelles. So these parts of the cell that are damaged and allowing your body to, to be able to rebuild it. And so it's really, really good stuff. And it's something that we really want to enhance in our body on a regular basis. And so most people in our society today are just, they're deficient in autophagy. They're not getting enough of this. And so we need, our body needs a balance between building and cleansing. And autophagy is part of the cellular cleansing, basically taking out the trash, recycling, right? Getting this stuff out of our house and we need to induce it. Our ancestors naturally induced it by going through periods of famine. But in today's society, we have so much food around us. It's so prevalent. We've got to be really intentional about taking a pause from eating. We've got to be intentional about stressing our body, whether it's through exercise or through um, cold water, for example, or intense heat like a sauna, which can enhance autophagy as well. So these sort of cellular stressors basically tell the body, hey, we need to produce more energy. We need more energy production. We don't have the raw materials. So we're going to go into the cell and break down some of these older organelles, take them out and rebuild new healthier organelles. And so one of the key organelles there is the mitochondria. And so the process the body goes through is this thing called a phago 4 And so this is something that lives inside of our cells and it gets activated through certain genetic pathways like the AMPK pathway. And it actually has this great ability to be flexible and bend and it's able to, in a sense, you know, elongate itself and surround the organelles. Like in this case, it's the mitochondria. When we break down an old mitochondria like what you're seeing here, this is actually called mitophagy. And so we have this enzyme called a lysosome which comes in and breaks it light lytic means basically break down so it's breaking this down and then it will take those raw materials and use it to rebuild a new healthier mitochondria and so the top five benefits of autophagy is it gets rid of these older cells uh, we call those the i always butcher this term but it's uh the um uh, the senescence, no, no, it's not, that's not how you say it. It's, uh, I can't, I can never say it right. But uh, anyways, they're older cells. They're cells that have aged. It helps improve mitochondrial health. Mitochondria are where we produce all the energy in our body. Senescent, I'm trying to say it right. I think it's uh, senescent, that's the name of it. So it gets rid of senescent cells, which are the older damaged cells. Um, it also helps eliminate viral infected cells. This is really key for us to know because, you know, we're told that we can never get rid of viruses, but actually we can through this process of autophagy, our body can break down infected cells. And the cool thing about it is when we induce autophagy, the first cells the body tries to eliminate are the infected cells. They are the damaged cells. So it keeps, it preserves healthier, more vibrant cells, and it goes after the cells that are not functioning right. And so we want to be in a state where we're able to induce autophagy from time to time to really clean up any sort of infected cells. And all of us are being exposed to viruses, and we all have you know, infected cells from time to time. It's very important to be cycling through periods of autophagy and periods of building, building our body. It also reduces cellular apoptosis. And apoptosis is a great thing in our body because apoptosis is one way our body gets rid of abnormal cells like cancer cells. However, apoptosis is very energy demanding. So it takes a lot of our own energy. It's much easier 
for our body, it's much more energy efficient for our body to repair a damaged cell than it is to destroy a damaged cell. And so autophagy helps uh, reduce the amount of apoptosis that goes on, which helps preserve more cellular energy. If we get a lot of apoptosis, we feel really awful. Okay, we, in a sense, kind of like a fever or flu, um, we just feel, uh, we feel hungover. We feel, you know, really uh, feverish. And so it's much better, again, to uh, go through a process of autophagy where you actually feel great as your body's going through that. And then it creates a stronger and more stress-resilient body and mind, and that's really what we're going for. Stronger, more stress-resilient cells in our body so we can have a stronger, more stress-resilient body and mind. And so we look at the mitochondria, we know that fasting and also ketones are great stimulus for mitophagy, where we break down the older mitochondria and we help form new mitochondria. Mitochondria are so important because they produce all the energy within our cells and they help basically, you know, they're, they're under a lot of oxidative stress because they're constantly producing energy. And so we need to really constantly be turning them over and creating new healthy mitochondria because again, they become damaged so easily. And so mitophagy is such an important thing that we want to be able to stimulate on a regular basis. And so here are the top food and herbal compounds. And the unique thing about each one of these is they're all polyphenols. So they have a multiple phenol groups and they actually are activate a cell stress response that stimulates the AMPK pathway and stimulates this autophagy process, which is really powerful. So we've got quercetin, which we can find in things like red onions, cranberries, elderberries. So quercetin, we can also supplement with this, is a really, really powerful polyphenolic compound that uh, is just great for helping stimulate autophagy. We've got ginger, which has a compound called 6-shagiol, and it has several other compounds, gingerols as well, that help stimulate autophagy. We've got turmeric, which has curcuminoids, the most common, the most well-known and well-researched one is called curcumin, which helps stimulate autophagy. We've got resveratrol, which we can find in things like red wine, fermented grapes, blueberries, um, even you know red onions, so it has more of a red pigment to it. Resveratrol stimulates a cert two path gene pathways, an AMPK pathway to to help stimulate autophagy in our body. Resveratrol may stimulate autophagy in our skin better than anything actually for helping repair damaged skin. Uh, ECGC. So this is something we find in green tea, oolong tea, and dark chocolate actually has a lot of epigalactin catechins and these compounds are again very very powerful for helping stimulate ampk pathway and autophagy we've got citrus bergamot which has citrus bioflavonoids like routine um there's several other hepsarin that are really really good again for stimulating autophagy and then you've got carnosic acid there's also rose rosmarinic acid which we can find in oregano sage rosemary these sorts of italian herbs that also is great for stimulating autophagy so i recommend utilizing these things on a regular basis including these foods in your foods so using you know dried herbs fresh herbs um, the citrus bergamot can be harder to find, but you can certainly do the Earl Grey tea. You can also do lemons and limes. Believe it or not, lemons and limes are very rich in bioflavonoids too. So you can squeeze that in water and that can really help enhance autophagy as well. You can also put it on your food, drinking things like green tea, matcha green tea, really great idea. Resveratrol, getting that you can obviously drink. Like if you're going to drink wine, I recommend Dry Farms Wine is the brand that I <clears throat> that I'll recommend, which is a fantastic uh, wine that doesn't elevate your blood sugar. So you can drink that. I would drink it with your dinner, not during your fasting window, but drink it like sip on it, you know, during a, a meal. And those polyphenolic compounds will actually help quench oxidative stress that may come from the meal. Like if you have cooked meat or something like that, uh, it's going to help quench that. It's going to also help your body get back into a state of autophagy later on after you digest your meal. So this can be really, really helpful for you guys. And I see some of you guys have some questions. And so uh, if you do, I'm going to answer those right at the end. Now, the product that I'll put a lot of my clients on to help stimulate autophagy is called Inflam Defense. And Inflam Defense has curcumin 
It has ginger compounds, ginger polyphenols in it, in there. It's got quercetin. It has uh, rosemary in there, so you get the rosmarinic acid and the carnosinic acid. It also has um, turmeric, so you've got your curcumin in there. Um, so a lot of powerful things. It also has proteolytic enzymes, which are also really good for breaking down scar tissue and helping with improving the autophagy process too. So this is my go-to product in Flam Defense. You can find it in my store, something I use on a daily basis, something I highly recommend for reducing inflammation in your body and helping stimulate better autophagy mechanisms. Now, what you wanna do really with the fasting is create a lifestyle around it. Now. Certainly a, an extended fast, like a five or seven day fast is going to stimulate a high level of autophagy and that's great, but you can also get a decent amount of autophagy by fasting on a daily basis, doing intermittent fasting. And so where the autophagy starts to kick in is roughly between 16 to 18 hours in somebody who's already keto adapted. So meaning that your body is already good at using fat and also ketones as a fuel source. So if you're on a higher carbohydrate diet and you're a sugar burner, you're, it's, it's gonna take roughly, probably by the end of the third day, if you're, you've gotta do like a three day fast to stimulate autophagy or at least a good amount of autophagy. However, if you're keto or fat adapted, you're gonna start stimulating autophagy at roughly in that 16 to 18 hour window. Um, and especially if you incorporate exercise in that as well. So doing some good high intensity exercise like some sprints or weightlifting or something like that will help really rev that up. And then utilizing these herbs, taking something like the Inflamed Defense or utilizing herbal teas. Um, you know, certainly we talked about Earl Grey tea. You can squeeze a little bit, a tiny bit of lemon in there. Don't worry about the carbs. You know, there's like basically no sugar in that lemons or limes. It's not going to break your fast. Wouldn't worry about that. It's actually the bioflavonoids in there are going to enhance the autophagy process. So you can certainly do that. You can do, uh, you know, different citrus teas are good, ginger tea, um, things like that. So drinking herbal teas, green tea, uh, you know, obviously another great one with the ECGC in there. So drinking herbal tea, coffee also, black coffee can really help with this. Unless you're somebody that has a stress response to the coffee, in which case you would notice that you have uh, you would probably notice cravings, anxiety, maybe irritability a few hours after the fast, so uh, or after the coffee. And that, in which case, you know, obviously that's a sign that you're you're responding negatively to the coffee. In fact, anything that you consume, like if you consume stevia in your water, and that induces more cravings, that's a sign that it had an insulin response. And it's breaking your fast because when insulin elevates, it shuts down autophagy. So if you, when you drink coffee, you should feel really good. Like you should just feel mentally alert, sharp, not hungry, no cravings, really productive, you know, and, and uh, ready to, to get going with your day. You shouldn't feel over anxious. You shouldn't feel irritable. Those are all signs that you are getting a stress response in your body. So if you feel good with it, then great. If not, then don't do it. Um, same thing with the herbal teas, same thing with lemon or lime or stevia. If you put that in your water, it's the same thing with all of those. If you feel really good, like if you put stevia in your water in the morning and it actually helps you fast and you're able to easily fast longer, you don't have cravings, you feel good, then it's not elevating your insulin enough to, to blunt autophagy. But if you put stevia in your water and you notice cravings and, you know, an hour later, two hours later, that's a sign that it's elevating your insulin and you're not having a good response to it. So that's something to always be, be wary of. Now, you're going to get your massive amount of autophagy if you're able to do something like a warrior fast on a daily basis or even a one-day fast or do one meal a day. Okay, You're going to get rampant amounts of autophagy on a daily basis if you're doing that. So I personally am doing somewhere between the strong fast and the warrior fast on most days, somewhere around 18 to 20 hours fasted uh, before I consume a meal. And then two days a week, I do a one day fast where I just only eat one meal a day. And it's usually lunch, sometimes it's dinner. And that really revs up that autophagy. And we wanna get a good cumulative amount of autophagy on a weekly basis. We wanna cycle through periods of feast and famine 
See, famine is amazing because, again, it stimulates autophagy, this cell cleansing period, and it also helps our body reduce inflammation, right? So drives down inflammation, resets genetic pathways that are associated with inflammation, like the neuroinflammasome that, inf- that amplifies inflammation throughout the brain, uh, and then the overall systemic inflammasomes. These are genetic receptors that ramp up inflammation throughout our body. So fasting, doing daily intermittent fasting or extended fasting can really drive these things down. And uh, so we're not overdoing our inflammatory response. Then when we eat in a short window, now when we eat, we need to eat a lot. We really want to stimulate insulin and our mTOR pathways that are associated with building and repair, right? So building up new cells, stimulating stem cells. And so this is important when we do eat, we eat really, really well. And so, but we don't want to do that, you know, to the, to the detriment of autophagy. We don't want to just be doing that all the time. And that's why we do it in a closed window. So if you're able to get your meals in something like a four to maybe eight hour eating window, you're going to really help stimulate autophagy, but also at the same time, be able to develop new, healthy, strong cells and and not lose too much weight. You know, obviously optimize your weight. Um, I'm somebody who's very lean, so I'm not trying to lose weight and I want to maintain my weight. And so this really helps by fasting uh, during, you know, 16 to 20 hours a day, sometimes 24. And then feasting when I do eat really helps that cycle. And so hopefully uh, this has been helpful for you guys. And uh, looking at the comments, not seeing any major questions. Cynthia, thanks so much for being on with us. Mimi, thanks so much for being on with us. Revolution 14, yes, thank you for spelling that out for me. Senescent cells, right? That's the older cells. So anyways, if you guys uh, are new to my channel, please subscribe so you get you know, basically updates, know exactly when I'm going live with this and get all my most cutting edge videos. Uh, If not, you know, just definitely give me a like, share this with somebody and uh, we'll see you guys on a future online video. Be blessed, everybody.